What's up, everybody? It's Make It Make Sense. And y'all, I'm starting to think that Diddy wants us to feel bad for him. And I don't. <laughs> like the video as the intro plays, because we got a lot to get into. Could somebody please make it make sense? Make it make sense to me intellectually. Make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense. Make sense. Make it. <laughs> y'all like my shirt <laughs> sorry i'm sorry let me be i'm a journalist <laughs> uh i'm glad you brought it up ashley says diddy's neighbors are talking we're gonna start there because i low-key kind of thought this was kind of lame um this popped up shout out to my friend in real life who sent me this Here we go. Make sure you guys can actually hear this. I live right next to him. He do too much. He be like big ass buses, like big ass buses. He can see all type of shit hop out. Especially at nighttime, like around three o'clock in the morning. See, I don't think this is cool, funny, or cute because if you felt like this man was doing something inappropriate to minors, why wouldn't you have alerted the authorities yourself? Or were you really at the parties? Just the thought. Everybody got something to say. Exactly. Oh, and thank you. Um, I got a couple of um, cash apps. Uh, thank you, Carmen. Thank you, Tanya. And thank you, Angela, um, for the cash apps. I really do be forgetting to scroll my cash apps. You don't have to um, send me any cash apps, but if you choose to, it's always appreciated. Okay, so let's get into it. I, yeah, I didn't like that. So I have a friend who's actually kind of like a financial guru. So I had my ideas about Diddy liquid, um, not necessarily liquidating his assets, but when he sold his shares of revolt. So I went to my friend. So we'll get into it and what he could be doing with this money. It says, uh, Diddy, let's go of revolt TV, still black owned mystery buyer. Diddy's no longer associated with revolt TV in any form or fashion. The company he started in 2013, because it's now completely under new ownership, TMZ has learned. Sources familiar with the deal tell us Diddy re recently sold off all of his shares to an interested buyer for an undisclosed sum. But we're told the company remains Black-owned, upholding its original connection and dedicating it to future. Who do y'all think that he sold it to? Who's just sitting around with a whole bunch of money? Who might did he have something on? Just wonder. I don't know. Y'all could throw out names if you want. But uh, <laughs> uh Tyler would be a good one. Um, but anyway, let's continue. Um, blah blah. He wants 
upholding its original connection and dedication to furthering the culture. Like we said, it's unclear what exactly Revolt went for when it was all said and done, but we're told that the new bosses wish to remain anonymous for the time being. With that said, our sources say they share a deep passion for Black culture, and they plan on publicly making a formal introduction in the coming weeks. Um, as you know, Diddy has been inactive with the network since stepping down as a chairman last November, right when Cassie's lawsuit dropped. And his last order of business was being notified of the sale, which we're told just went through this week. We're told it was an amicable deal and everyone's happy. For our sources, Revolt CEO, Dottavio Samuels, and Chief Brand Officer, Dion Graham, will remain in their current positions and assist the owner while the ink dries on the contract. Another thing we're told, there'll be no major changes to staffing or production for Revolt TV employees. Our so I wonder if now that Diddy's out, the Revolt podcasters, the Breakfast Club, if they are really going to start going in on Diddy. The CEO of Zeus. I could see Lemmy doing that, but are his pockets deep enough for that yet? I don't know, but I could definitely see Lemmy doing that. I do know that Lemmy has a nice chunk of change. He makes a lot of money from Zeus. Um, we're told that no major changes to the staffing or production. Our sources say that over time, the new owner will implement their vision, but for that, but for the time being, things will mostly remain the same as the transition occurs. The one thing everybody's wondering is the is this news in any way connected to what's been going on with Diddy personally? On its face, the two things appear to be unrelated. As we're told, this has been getting hammered out well before Diddy's properties were raided Monday. Now, true, you wouldn't just be selling this to a new owner just like that. However, he had to step down because you can't be the face of something and sink the brand because your public persona is now shit. You can't like do that. So of course he had to step down. But let's get into a few more things with that before we go into the <laughs> offshore account of it all. Oh, Black Enterprise says, um, Sean Diddy Combs is no longer an owner at Revolt TV after selling off shares to an anonymous buyer. Did he secure his bag? Um, that's the question. The hip hop mogul is seeing a drastic fall from grace due to a series of assault and misconduct lawsuits and allegations of operating a trafficking ring among the mounting legal woes, which include having his homes in LA and Miami. We all know that. This is what I want to get into. I, when I reached out to my friend who is the actual, you know, financial guru, I had my ideas of why Diddy might want to get rid of his revolt. I feel like revolt is a passion project for Diddy. Um, revolt TV wasn't just, you know, making him millions and millions of dollars. Diddy's assets primarily come from his licensing of his name to these liquor companies. And, you know, the people say he wasn't allegedly paying his artists. He didn't really have too many artists on his roster anyway. But licensing Diddy's name is really what pays his bills. He has branded himself the party boy, the go-to person for all that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> Revolt TV was a wild card in his portfolio. Sharing his stock liquidates his assets. What could Diddy be doing with liquidated assets? On its face, you might say, Diddy has so many legal troubles. He's fighting legal battles with top attorneys on all fronts. He might have needed liquid money. It's kind of what I was thinking. But my friend says, once you liquidate your assets, it A, protects you to a certain degree. Now, they cannot come after that particular asset. Once the money is liquid, then you can start moving it to offshore accounts and forming shell companies, which we all know is a good way to hide. Now, I'm not saying Diddy has done this yet. I'm just giving you guys a little insight into what somebody could do when you liquidate millions of dollars worth of stock in something. I was like, I was so glad that I called because I was thinking... Under normal circumstances, nobody can force you to literally sell your stock. However, you can be strong armed. And one way, if you think about Ciroc and the Leon, 
if Diddy didn't really have to invest any money, I believe he gave like what two dollars. He licensed basically his name, his likeness, and his branding of being a party brand, and made himself and that company millions and millions and millions of dollars. Diddy was already heavily involved in a lawsuit, in the lawsuit with um the brand. <laughs> He was alleging that that brand was doing things that were racially motivated with him. And he kind of had a case. After all this broke, it's a wrap. Your name is dirt. Nobody is going out saying, give me some DeLeon. Nobody is going out saying, I definitely need some Ciroc and pineapple. Nobody's doing that anymore. The market for these liquors is already saturated with celebrities. I'm curious to know where this money is going to go. Another thing is, well, let's do this. Technically, you're not supposed to be able to strong arm anybody out of their stocks in a company unless you're Diddy, allegedly. Put my banner up. Do you guys remember a guy named Kirk Burroughs? Kirk Burroughs was right there at the onset of everything with Diddy. He helped him really put together Bad Boy. I think he was the first president of the company until he just wasn't. So we're gonna, I'm gonna let you guys hear what Kirk Burroughs had to say about what Diddy does with stocks of companies. Shout out to the Art of the Dialogue and Kirk Burroughs for this one. My notebooks right now and everything I need to do that day. Oh, let's get the let's get the uh, uh, the LLC together. Oh, call Kenny. We need the employment agreement. Oh, let's do this. So we got this session to do. Oh, mostly it was productions with the producers because we were uniquely situated as Bad Boy Productions to do productions on Uptown Artists Productions, and we were paid through Bad Boy through Uptown paying Bad Boy to do tracks for like Heavy D, Mary J, things of that sort. So we were very active in that. And, and that kept us very busy in that time to do that. And what happened along the way, we had a lot of success, got fired from Uptown. I was there helping him to build back up again. Loyal, no betrayal, no stealing, family, his son's God, godfather. We were renegotiating, bad boy. We had gotten over CCNY. It looked like the coast was clear. We were renegotiating with Arista. We were about to get a step up in the money. I had 25% of the company. I didn't know why he needed to get that back from me and then give it back to me again. I didn't understand that. That's like a, a trick, like, okay, here, I gave it to you, now give it back, and don't worry, I'm gonna give it right back to you. I didn't wanna give it up. So he came into my office one day unexpected, him and Kenny Mysalis, they had it planned out. Kenny had the briefcase with all the stock certificates in it, and, and Diddy had the bat. Not like, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you with the bat, but he had the bat like, man, we got to do this. This has to happen. I didn't feel I was going to get beat down in that office, in all honesty. Are you that hearing this? That could jump out of the shadows in a minute. I wasn't threatened by him. Did he decide that he was not going to honor his agreement with his president of the company, brought goons and a bat, and was forcing the man to sign over his 25% um, ownership of Bad Boy? So anybody else... You can't strong arm them. You can't physically make somebody sign over their stocks unless you did it. The other thing that Diddy might need, let me see. Yo, I got to take notes these days. Um, liquidating the assets, he needs the cash, layer of protection. He can then move the money. They can then, if he chooses to, you know, go to offshore accounts, those um and there was one more that i wanted to run by you or was that it oh that was it they can't force him but they can basically say you're tearing down the company oh lastly my bad if diddy was still the face of the brand if diddy was still the front person in this company your stocks aren't going to be shit if you sink the company.
So those are the general options. Once he liquidates these, he can go to attorney fees, he can go to offshore accounts. It could go to um, just making sure that his stocks are still at a certain value by him no longer being associated with the company. If this sounds familiar, then you know, <laughs> then you remember the story of Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons had to remove himself from all of his companies before they tanked. Russell Simmons removing himself after second allegation of assault. Def Jam Recordings co-founder Russell Simmons announced Thursday that he would relinquish his leadership roles in all the companies I founded after a second woman accused him of assault. Um, following the publication of a letter written by Jenny Lumet in The Hollywood Reporter, Simmons issued a statement that he would be removing himself from his company. In his statement, Simmons acknowledges Lumet's allegation, but only admits to being thoughtless and insensitive in some of my relationships over many decades. Basically, I got to get the hell out of town. Now, I don't know how deep Diddy's pockets are, but you can't have Sean Hawley fighting on multiple fronts. He's using Maxine, the Epstein lady's attorney, to fight some of these cases. The money is just not there. Now, we did hear that potentially Cassie's lawsuit got paid out by the insurance company, not by Diddy directly, because she was suing him, and that did make the in she was suing him, and that means that the company could pay for it because she was also suing him as a boss that took advantage of her. So, y'all, this goes very deep, but the other lawsuits, I found out today that let's say that that company, that insurance company was paying Diddy or paying Cassie because she won that suit at a certain point. There have been times where the insurance stops paying, and then that's when they can now go after your assets. If you want, like, if you want for context, I don't know that Tasha K necessarily had an insurance company when she was sued by Cardi B, and that's why from the very beginning they went after Tasha. But in the event that Tasha did have insurance and maybe the insurance could no longer do it or something happened, then they would be going after Tasha's assets the same way that Cardi B is now going after Tasha's assets. Guys, you got to get defamation insurance. Oh, Shalon subrogation. Um, Tarnik said the insurance didn't pay Cassie. Technically, we don't actually know that. I said it could be an option. Um, one of my friends... Simone, she's an attorney from Girl Is That Legal. She actually, in her real day-to-day -day life, those are the type of cases that she does. And it's her belief that it might have been paid out through um, Diddy's business insurance. So, yeah. But anyway, yeah, if the story reminds you of anything, it would be Russell Simmons who did the same thing. So if you're needing kind of like a map for what somebody in Diddy's shoes might do, look to Russell. Do I think that Diddy will flee to Bali or some place that does not have an extradition? I highly doubt it. Diddy's Diddy does not have the ability to make money without that party lifestyle, without licensing his name. So I believe that Diddy is going to fight as hard as he can to prove um, that the allegations are wrong and that these people are lying. So that he can save, so that he can save some semblance of his career. But at the end of the day, what do I believe? Because Diddy, you're going to jail. <laughs> no, he's going to jail. <laughs> that's what I believe. And so clank that's the clank, clank the clank. Really, the bar soap. Yeah, that's what I believe. But um. No, he, he does have options. He's going to fight this out, but I can only imagine if there's not a lot of money coming in, then you would need to liquidate assets. Now, how do you, now hiding those assets, I think the feds are going to be watching every move that he makes. But he's not new to this. The guy that I just told you about, Kirk Burroughs, who made the allegation about the bat, he beat that. Let's see. Here we go. 
the way that he shaped this. So Kirk sued him. Um, and when it got thrown out, he said the whole thing was a complete fabrication. Isn't that the same thing they said about Cassie? We are gratified with the Applet Div um, Division's unanimous decision. This is a perfect example of how vulnerable cele celebrities are to the filing of lawsuits that don't have any merit. So the person lied. If you heard that, you would think, okay, well, did he won? No, the court said that they just couldn't do anything because the, it was too old. But he would have you believe that this person was just trying to shake him down. The same thing they said about Cassie. And then the next day he settles. That's what Diddy does, y'all. Um, <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter. If, uh, I don't even know. I There's something coming up in a couple days on one of the cases. I'll let you guys know. But let's get into this. Cuban Gooding Jr. Here we go. Now, I'd already told you that Cuba was in the initial complaint. But in this new amended complaint that I told you guys, that I showed you guys today, is when we found out that Cuba is now a co defendant. So if you don't remember, let me just say this much Cuba ain't the Cuba that we remember. Cuba has low key turned into a party boy, which makes him a perfect bedfellow for um for Diddy. Y'all remember these photos, right? Where I think he was in Miami, shirtless, drunk, sweaty, nasty. <laughs> Y'all remember these photos, right? So to hear that he is allegedly in cahoots with Diddy, allegedly, makes you go, hmm, like what are their conversations like? You're the bottom, you're the bottom. that's why you're, you're over there. I feel like that's what their conversations are like. Okay, but let me get serious. Let me get serious. Back to Cuba and what Cuba did. Serious. <laughs> Cuba Gooding has been added as, co as a co-defendant in Lil Rod's lawsuit against Diddy. Oscar winner Cuba Gooding Jr. has been named as co-defendant in a lawsuit brought against the embattled hip-hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs. The lawsuit, which was brought in February by Diddy's love album producer, Rodney Little Jones, Little Rod Jones, was amended Monday to list Gooding as a defendant, as well as to include a declaration from former Motown Records chief executive, Ethiopia, about a technical license agreement and to insert additional evidence to, to RICO and trafficking section of the lawsuit. That's all what I showed you guys earlier today. If you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. Um, the Second Amendment complaint. Sorry, the second amended complaint was filed Monday, the same day that the Homeland Security investigations conducted by coastal raids on mansions owned by Combs. I told you guys I, I released that information before even the news outlets have released it. But listen to this. This man read the dog shit out of Cuban Gooden Jr. <laughs> Blackburn Jones's attorney said he has not been contacted by federal authorities regarding the Homeland Security investigation. Defendant Cuba Gooding Jr. was a relevant actor <laughs> who has fallen from grace due to several assault lawsuits and a recent guilty plea for sexual assault, said the complaint, which was obtained Tuesday by the Times. In it, Blackburn noted that his client, a Chicago-born producer who produced nine songs on Diddy's 2023 album, believed Combs was grooming him to pass him off to his friends, and that fear became a reality when Combs introduced him to Gooding on his yacht in January. <laughs> Um, Jones accused Gooding of fondling his upper leg. Let me make this bigger so you guys can see it. <laughs> Not you're right. <laughs> I told you <laughs> it was a re was a relevant actor. <laughs> uh, now he's at Diddy's party saying, "Show me the bussy." Um. <laughs> allegedly allegedly pay me no attention y'all pay me absolutely no attention um jones accused gooding of fondling his legs upper inner thighs near his groin 
the small of his back near his buttocks and his shoulders, which made the producer extremely uncomfortable. Although he allegedly rejected the actor's advances, Gooding did not stop until Mr. Jones forcibly pushed him away. As the owner of the property, Mr. Combs had a duty to protect Mr. Jones from the harm he suffered at the hands of Cuba Gooding Jr. Mr. Combs breached his duty when he failed to stop Cuba Gooding Jr. from assaulting Mr. Jones. In furtherance of this breach, Mr. Combs encouraged Cuba Gooding Jr. to continue to assault on Mr. Jones when he said that Cuba Gooding Jr. should privately get to know Mr. Jones better. Mr. Jones has suffered immensely because of Mr. Combs' intentional breach of his duty to him. Representing representatives for Gooding did not immediately respond Tuesday to the Times' request for a comment. Gooding 56, who has separately pleaded guilty to a forcible touching and settled a R-word lawsuit last year, was mentioned in Jones' initial lawsuit filed in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York, with Jones alleging that he was sexually harassed and assaulted by the Jerry Maguire star. The American Horror Story actor joins a list of co-defendants in the $30 million lawsuit that includes Combs, his son Justin Dior Combs, Universal Music Group Chief Executive Lucian Charles Grange, UMG, former Motown Record Executives, Ethiopia, blah, 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 and several Jane Doe's. That network of alleged involvement, Jones said, amounts to a violation of racketeering influence and corrupt organizations, also known as RICO. Now, I'm curious to see, do y'all think that Cuba did this? Um, Empress Q says, do you have a chime? Do you have chime? No, what is chime? <clears throat> Thank you for the super chat. I don't I don't know what chime is. Is that like a like a cash app? Uh booty butter, time to get rush or fat farm, <laughs> time to get a rush or fat farm card. Are the rush cards still around? I thought that was I thought those were gone a long time ago. You wouldn't want a rush card, though. There were they were all so many lawsuits about how they were taking people's money, not giving them refunds, um, excessive fees. Uh, and again, Booty Butter, thanks for the super chat. Uh, I feel like his cootie cat smells like pork. Rind. Why do I continue to read your super chats? <laughs> Chime is an online bank. OK, no, I haven't. I hadn't heard of that one yet. <laughs> I don't think it, I don't know who Booty Butter is, but uh Booty Butter has a lot to say. Y'all know Kamora is somewhere that's some hot tea. Happy, happy, elated, excited. Now, um, I did tell you guys that I was gonna show you pictures. Well, um, before this hit the news, I showed you guys the pictures on my Instagram of who were alleged to be Diddy's mule. Um, this guy, Diddy, alleged mule arrested on drug charges during run-in with feds. Diddy's alleged mule, as described in a recent lawsuit, was arrested Monday while Diddy and his crew were stopped by federal law enforcement agents, TMZ has confirmed. According to the affidavit obtained by TMZ, 25-year-old Brendan Paul was booked on two separate drug charges after the feds intercepted Diddy's plane at the Opelika Airport in Miami, namely one count of possession of suspected coke and another possession of with We'll just say puff puff, um, both of which are felonies in Florida. In the paperwork, officers claim that while they were working in conjunction with Homeland Security and Customs and Border Protection personnel, they came across what they described as suspected drugs in Paul's travels bags, which they say he claimed. Now, do we know that they were his or is he just taking the fall? Um, We got like. 5400 in the chat guys definitely hit the like button if you are new to the channel please subscribe um we are now like actually super close to hitting 150,000 subscribers um less than a thousand away so definitely subscribe if you're not subscribed and hitting the like button is a free way to support the channel I, and i appreciate it um <laughs> oh y'all like booty butters comments <laughs> Uh, Tremaine, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate you. Okay, so here we go. So remember, I showed you this guy earlier, and I showed you him with the black Prada bag that they say is full of Diddy candy, allegedly. Who knowingly, like you really have to be in the mindset that nobody can touch you 
if you are a drug dealer who is taking photos with your drugs, it's that mindset that I can do whatever I want. I'll show y'all how we have fun and stay out of jail too wow. and make money. Um, you can't get you can't get more Diddy than that comment. Um, the cops go on to say that the suspected narcotics were tested and found to be legit, leading to Paul's arrest. He was booked into jail, but has since been bailed out. Paul was named in Rodney Jones' explosive complaint against Diddy, which identified him as a close co-defendant of Diddy, and more importantly, as someone who allegedly handles Diddy's drugs and pow pals. There are photos of Paul with Diddy included in Rodney's lawsuit. And then I, I on my Instagram have the photo of him with holding some pill bottles in the like with the duffel. No, you can't like you literally can't make this. You can't make this up. Make sure no other pictures on here. Um, there's no evidence thus far that the drugs allegedly found on Paul were in any way connected to Diddy. Um, Diddy has previously denied all of Rodney's salacious claims. We reached out to Diddy's camp. So far, no word back. Um, did he also said never saw feds coming now this tracks because I don't think that Diddy would have had his sons on the plane if he actually knew that they were coming that day but I don't think based on my conversation with the attorney this morning I don't think that they gave him a specific date they just said you know sometimes you'll get tipped off to say hey something is coming down the pike make sure you're not trying to destroy any evidence but in this situation, I don't think that Diddy knew it was specifically this date. And if he did, he's trash for not letting his sons leave that house. And even worse, what if his little girls were there? Um, Diddy had no idea. Excuse me. He was on Uncle Sam's radar before federal agents came storming through his front doors, which is interesting considering the severity of the allegations he's been facing lately. Sources with direct knowledge tell teams. And also, you would not have your alleged drug mule, right? You would not have anybody with any substances like that in your house. You would have made sure that all the stuff you hide under the sink is gone. You would have made sure that everything you got in one of your shoes is gone. The stuff you keep in your pockets is gone, right? There's no way that you would have that guy there with your alleged or some substances if you knew that the feds were coming on that day. He would have got the hell out of there. Oh, I do have that interview. I did that interview this morning with um, Dimitri. Um, he's a pretty famous attorney in New York. I'll try to drop that tomorrow morning. Um, let's see. Sources with direct knowledge tell TMZ the bad boy founder and his team were completely in the dark about what was coming Monday, namely the fact that Homeland Security was coordinating two separate raids on both coasts, one in LA and one in Miami. While some might have suspected Diddy was privy to the situation, on account of him being stopped on the runway of an airport in Miami, we're told that's simply not true. We've been told he was with his family when agents rolled up on them at the Miami Opelika Executive Airport. In fact, our sources tell us Diddy was getting ready to enjoy spring break with his kids, a couple of whom are still in high school. Ooh, there are the girls. That's horrible. You did this to them, though. Their plans for travel were derailed. However, on the drop of a dime, some of which we've seen documented in pics and video. There's even this, our sources, that even before the feds came bursting into Diddy's L.A. property, there were signs that news helicopters were already in the sky and waiting. So who tipped the news off? Point is, Diddy was completely oblivious to any of this happening, and the guy was not on the run. An unfair conclusion many have leapt to as the saga has unfolded. Now, people say that Diddy and... Um, TMZ are in bed. So take that with a grain of salt. I'm, I'm starting not to trust nobody. I'm starting not to trust nobody. <laughs> um, I, But I trust that this is true. Because Diddy, you're going to jail. <laughs> no, he's going to jail. <laughs> Will there be a surviving Diddy? Absolutely. This was weird. Um, did his son King and Justin leave his home, leave his LA mansion after raid? What's weird about this is Justin's girlfriend, I'm sorry, King Combs' girlfriend has been posting 
videos of her and King Combs making out ever since this happened. What what is that? Y'all think she just wants some attention? I can't show you that because you can't show that kind of stuff on YouTube, but it's just videos of her making out with him. So your your boyfriend just got handcuffed, his house just got raided by the feds, and you are posting videos of you making out with him. What would that be about? Diddy's two sons were hauled out of his LA home during a federal raid back um, when they came back to the property late that night, but they left very quickly thereafter with their stuff in tow. I wouldn't stay in that shit either. <laughs> I'd be out too. Um, let me see. I wanted to show you guys something else. Okay, here we go. So Diddy wants us to feel bad for him. It says Diddy's legal team calls the Homeland Security raids a witch hunt after video footage shows the chaotic aftermath. Um, Diddy's legal team is speaking out after Homeland Security raided two of his homes. Aaron Dyer gave the following statement to TMZ. Notice, you guys, TMZ is getting the statements. That's why I'm telling you, you can't necessarily trust everything that comes out of their mouth. Yes, they're a blog. Yes, um, they do put people's business out. But there's a reason that Diddy's attorney is giving TMZ statements. And think about how favorable that last um, that last excerpt, I say, that we just read. Um, people are being unfair to the guy. He clearly didn't know. That tells me that they have a connection. So when you're watching TMZ stuff, keep your eye, keep your good eye on them. Because I don't trust it. Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Did they beat the children up? As far as I know, when you have Homeland Security coming in, they do handcuff people. They detain them, get what they need, and then they let them go. Except if you're a drug mule, then you go to jail. But, you know, you guys can put in the replay gang or in the chat if you felt like they did anything excessive. They did handcuff his kids. We have the photos and we see them handcuffed. But to me, I think, you know, that's really on you. You did this to them. It was your actions that caused the feds to come. Let me see if I have the photos. No, I had one. I might have deleted it. But you guys have already seen. Yeah, they were in handcuffs. I don't think that's so bad. Are we supposed to feel bad for them? Mr. Combs was never detained, but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculations, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. This unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced, coordinated media presence. Now, that is interesting. How did the news media know to have helicopters ready? Leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There has been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Do y'all think he's innocent? Let me know. I have to say allegedly, and I have to give you guys both sides of the story because that's what you have to do when you're covering this. If you are a new content creator, you're going to cover it. Make sure you let people know that Diddy has said that, you know, he's innocent and he's denied all charges. Uh, Tremaine, thank you so much for the super sticker. Uh, Lisa's Truth Ministry says, oh, thank you for becoming a member. I appreciate you. Uh, Precious Pisces, thank you for becoming a member as well. Pink Curly, thanks for becoming a member. Uh, Angel says, don't be surprised if Diddy get Epstein. I wouldn't be surprised at anything at this point. Um... Straight to the point. Thanks for the super chat. Biggie's mom is finally getting justice. Poor Miss Wallace. Poor Miss Wallace. Uh, Patricia Magas, thank you so much for the super sticker. Um, Marquita, do you have security? So serious. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm good for now, but thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Pink Curly, just became a member. So excited to see the members only exclusives. Thanks for all you do. Thank you for pink. Thank you for supporting the channel like that. 
Uh, Michelle says, Black Hollywood is very quiet. Who is on them tapes and servers? And what are they doing? People's careers are going to go down. Leaks will be coming soon. And I'll be here for every single leak. Glad you mentioned that because 50 is calling people out already. It said, now it's not Diddy do it. It's Diddy's done. They don't come like that unless they got a case. And it's showing the photos of his sons. Y'all, this it's moving. This is moving extremely fast. It's moving extremely fast. But I, you know, I think it's time at this point that stuff start. Nobody should feel like they're above the law. If these allegations are true about underage people and just being in a space where you feel that you can forcibly take somebody's right to say no, it needs to come to the light. It really does. Because if not, this could have gone on forever. Now, I can't say that the man did it, but it's my belief that it's my personal belief that Diddy's going down. Because Diddy, you're going to jail. <laughs> no, he's going to jail. <laughs> hey, AT2, um, I'm surprised by the number of Diddy defenders all across social media. Now, I did have somebody reach out to me and tell me that they felt like this was just another instance of people trying to take a black man down. Um, I've heard Cassie should have known better. Cassie was wrong um, as well because she stayed in it. Cassie just wanted money. And I'm sitting there like, what, what is that? We're going to protect R. Kelly. We're going to protect Diddy because they're celebrities. If you have all of these people basically saying the same thing, we have Cassie with photos that this man was putting his hands on her. We have Diddy allegedly blowing up kid, blowing up um, old boy's car. We have all of these instances where everybody is saying the same thing about this man. Do we protect him at all costs because he's a successful black man? Or do we hold him accountable for his actions? That's going to be for the court to decide. The court of public opinion, I felt, had decided. But like 82 said, I've been seeing a growing number of people who feel like he just got set up. And I, I, I don't feel that way. I feel like I feel like he put his hands on Cassie. I feel like the lawsuits are not meritless. And I can't wait for him to go to trial with the rest if he can't afford to pay the attorneys. Uh, Helena, thanks for the super sticker. Food for thought. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Um, give Mims a heart. It's only 60. Oh, y'all, we got like over 6,000 people in the chat. Um, definitely hit that like button. Thank you, honey love. It's a free way to support the channel. Um, Michelle also said, by the way, shout out to Wendy Williams, who who was taken off New York radio in the 90s for spilling all this tea on Puffy back then. Taken off the radio. And like Miss Jones said, um, that Diddy was going to leave her in a trunk. No, Wendy said Diddy was supposed to, he was going to kidnap her and, and put her in a trunk. And I think, um, did Wendy tell Miss Jones that there was going to be an alleged hit on her from Diddy? The stories get really convoluted because Wendy's husband was also trying to get Miss Jones. So I don't know. Apparently, uh, if you were a DJ back in the 90s, you weren't safe. Or a shock jock, I should say. <laughs> if you were a shock jock in the 90s, you weren't safe. Because we ain't never heard of anybody trying to go after... Um, who's the Latin lady on Hot 97? The one who beat Wendy up so bad, uh, Wendy had to grab a uh, broom to protect herself? Is it Angie Martinez? We never heard nobody say anything they was trying to get at Angie. But uh, yeah, Wendy definitely got beat up in that room. <laughs> they were, yeah, Angie Martinez. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know Wendy had to grab a broom. 
because she had tried to out somebody that Angie was dating and she did it on air while Angie was in the building. <laughs> Good old Wendy. Good old Wendy. Messy. Good old messy Wendy. Anyway, guys, I'm going to keep you guys up to date. It, up to date. I know that this is this new cycle is traveling extremely fast. Um but I'm working on things on the back end. So I will definitely, I don't think I'll be coming back tonight unless something really, really crazy happens. You guys have a good night. I'm definitely going to see you um, tomorrow though. Cause I'm going to release that video with the guy who does criminal defense and he's going to go in depth as to what this raid actually means. So that's a pre-recorded video. So I'll try to drop that tomorrow morning. Y'all have a good night. Oh, wait, we got one more. Um, Just Helen says, I think all of them do that. I think all of them that do this should be charged. They are just coming after black men. What about the other race that are doing the same thing? I definitely think that all of the predators, no matter what your race, I think that the veracity in which that we go after them should be equal. I That I agree with. But I'm not going to defend Diddy's behavior because at the very least, I believe everything that Cassie said. So anyway, you guys, thank you for the super chat. You guys have a good night. Oh, wait, we got one more from Jersey Girl. I didn't see that one. Um, They set themselves up. They get money and fame, think that they are the white man and, and hit up to... J and hit up, oh, heat up to degenerate act antics. You ain't lied, Jersey girl. <laughs> thank you for the super chat. And ASW Design, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate you. But guys, I really do have to go. So I will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>